Hey everyone, I am now joined by Chi and Justin. We're going to be talking about the cooling and power solutions for the new RTX 2000 series cards. I already talked with Tom Peterson, so if you want some of the content on overclocking and frequency response, be sure to check that video. So for today, let's, uh, we, let's start with the cooling solution, I guess. The cooling is the first time, at, that I remember anyway, that NVIDIA has done a non-blower card for reference. So. I, Let's uh, let's go through some of the basics here, I guess. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Thermaltake Level 20 VT Micro ATX case. The Level 20 VT takes the high quality Level 20 design and makes it more affordable and shrinks it down to a Micro ATX form factor at that. With fully modular paneling, it's possible to rearrange this case into whatever configuration you prefer. For a Micro ATX case that can be a discussion piece in a home theater system, click the link in the description below. You've got a dual axial solution do you want to walk through some of the top level changes other than that? Yeah, for sure. You know, we're, we're really excited about uh, our new coolant solution for, for the uh, RTX uh, 20 series. Uh, you know, it's the first time we've done uh, a Founders Edition with a dual axial uh, cooling solution. And in fact, it's the first time ever that a vapor chamber has been paired with a dual axial cooling solution. Um, and it provides really an incredible amount of, of um, cooling performance. Uh, you know, when you, you compare it to our previous uh, generation, the, the, the GTX 1080 Founders Edition, um, you know, you'll see temperatures running at like 20 degrees or so lower. You'll see acoustics at, you know, up to one, uh, one fifth quieter, or one fifth of the noise compared to the previous generation. So um, really some pretty significant improvements. And, and really the key is that um, we've combined the dual axial fan with the vapor chamber for the first time ever in a graphics card. Right. So that was my, my first question about it is the vapor chamber uh, completely or mostly obstructs the PCB. So then how do you go about dealing with the fact that air can't really get through the vapor chamber to the VRMs? What's what's connecting the VRMs to the rest of the cooler? Yeah, so under so we have a base plate that sits on top of the VRMs that's thermally connected to them. And in that base plate, we have a heat pipe. So the, the heat from the VRMs um, is thermally connected into that base plate. It spreads out through that heat pipe and can be exhausted out of the system. So then for the base plate and the fin stack, are those soldered together? Is it thermal pads? What's, what's the connection? Um, so the vapor chamber is soldered on um, to the fin stack. So it's got great uh, thermal connection there. And that vapor chamber does a great job of just spreading out the heat um, throughout, really evenly throughout um, the whole fin stack. Because really the key to, to, to the performance of the thermal solution is to be able to get the heat, which is concentrated in the GPU, really effectively and efficiently spread throughout all the fins. So that when the air blows down on it, you're really doing a great job of um, getting more air over more of the, the heated area and being able to remove it from the fans. And I guess I'll, I'll pitch this one out there too. Uh, for the fans, so I noticed, and I don't, we didn't talk about this before, but I noticed that the fans are slightly more spaced than some of the partner solutions. So in the past, partner solutions, the dual fans tend to be fairly close together. Sometimes it's because it's larger, sometimes they just do it that way. Is there any specific reasoning for the spacing? I mean, did you just optimize for where the VRM and the GPU are? Basically just optimize for, for, for the solution, for the GPU and for, for the entire layout. Um, you know, one of the other um, relatively new things that we did on the fan um, is that these are, not, these are 13 blade fans. So we added some more blades to that. And again, that gives you more airflow at a lower RPM for, for um, better airflow at, at, with less noise. Right. Uh, so Chi then, let's go on to the power stuff. So for first immediate question, what are we looking at for phase design? I mean, we've got core and memory. What can you walk me through for the TI models and the non-TI? Okay, so we have the most number of phases ever on a Founders Edition design. And we did that to be able to really be able to lean into overclocking and give everyone a wonderful overclocking experience and the best efficiency uh, ever on a Founders Edition card. And so with the TI, we have 13 phases of core, three phases of memory. Um, for the non-TI-80, uh, we have eight phases of core, two phases of memory. And for the 70 class card, we have six phases of core and two phases of memory. Um, and all of this put together with the dynamic phase shed uh, technology allows us to be efficient throughout the power draw range. So even when you're just having it plugged in and you're doing something like uh, gaming on the web or something that's less taxing, it's going to be super efficient in your system. So let's let's break down that word, uh, dynamic phase technology that you're working on now. I saw it in the presentation. The viewers haven't seen it yet. Let, can you walk us through that? Yeah. So. Um, when the power supplies, these uh, switching power supplies, how they work is they turn on and off really quick to shunt the current to the GPU. And when you have a lot of switching at 
very low current draw, then all of that energy is being burned during the switching process. So the more phases you have, the less efficient you are at low power. Um, at high power, you're actually going to spend most of the time in the conducting mode, um, and so you're, you want to be um, have more phases to con have less conduction loss. Uh, and so what we're doing is, as the power goes down, when, you use, uh, when you're running a lower power workload, you turn off phases that you don't need, and you reduce the amount of switching loss. Right, and one of the other things we saw in the presentation is there's, is it 60 watts of overclocking overhead or something like that? There's additional mm -hmm. power overhead from Pascal. Yeah, there is definitely more power overhead from Pascal. Uh, oh, sorry, power overclocking overhead, overclocking uh, overhead. Uh, uh, from you. Pascal. Um, not only is there is that coming from the phase additional phases, which provides more current, it also comes from the fact that we've provided um, bigger input connectors than we really needed to, um, and we have this advanced current monitoring technology. And you'll be able to see the current monitors on the board. You've done a great board analysis before. I, I love those things; they're Thank wonderful. You. Um, so, so uh, yeah, the current monitoring allows us to really dial in the current to make sure that everything is cool and, and uh, just wonderful for overclocking on the card. So for uh, other stuff here, you went through the phase design, phase count on that. Are there any, uh, we were talking about the power balancing, power monitoring. Is it true, I, I heard that there is some more power balancing between the two power headers on the boards. Is that accurate? Uh, yeah, I don't know how you found that out, but <laughs> thank you for calling it out. We had <laughs> free advertising. Um, yeah, so, so there is. Um, we have new um, power balancing technology as well, because uh, each phase is around uh, 30 watts. Um, it can be about 30 watts, and and if you try to try to draw it from one connector or another connector, depending on how the GPU is pulling power from the phases, you might not be able to fully utilize uh, all the current available on a particular input connector. So we have this really high precision um, power balancing capability now that uh, it really improves the amount of well we've had power balancing in the past but this is much faster and much more accurate. So we're able to fully utilize the input uh, available input power. My last question for you, back to the phase count. So uh, whenever we hear something like 12 phase, the instant assumption is it's doubled, or is two PW, PWM signals split between two FETs or something like that. Are you guys doubling at all? What's, what's, the, uh, what's the approach to 13 phase or eight phase designs on these? Yeah, so we have an all new uh, power controller for, for these cards. And uh, they're able to drive just a lot more phases. Um, power doublers uh, take up real estate on the PCB, or phase doublers, really, take up uh, real estate that we didn't want to spend. We wanted to spend as much of that real estate and putting down FETs and making it super efficient. And in fact, we also spent a bunch of space, if you'll notice in the Founders Edition, on twice as, nearly twice as many capacitors. And, and so that makes the uh, supplies ultra quiet. Um, and that actually also help, helps power efficiency. So we wanted to spend the, uh, the, the board area that way instead of putting down like phase doublers and other things that we could have done. And it's, it's just not going to, as you pass uh, current through the PCB, it's less efficient as well. So, yeah. Makes a lot of sense. So for more information, as always, there's a link in the description below for our article. And thank you, Chi and Justin, for joining sure. me. We'll see you all next time.